Mage Vampire or Nightmare Castle. So Heads, we'll watch Adam Mage Vampire. Tails, we'll watch uh, Nightmare Castle. Tails, Nightmare Castle it is. Let's do this. Lalo Duck, everyone. It's me again, Kenny. I hope everyone had a great holiday season. My teeth are, mm, are they stained? Mm, maybe a little bit. Oh, wow. Well. My Christmas was good. I was here, you know, in Nome, and my family lives in Kotzebue, so I didn't get to see them this year. But I did um, spend Christmas and a few other days over at my friend's place, and so that was nice. And I, I had a really good time, so I'm really glad that I had friends in Nome that would take me in and make me feel like family. And I got these earrings from my sister. They're really cute. I almost lost one at that house. And it's kind of a big house too, so <laughs> luckily it was in the bed that I slept on. So I was able to find it. So the movie I watched tonight was Nightmare Castle, and that was made in 1965. And it's a black and white movie I didn't know any of the stars. They weren't very big names or anything. I guess don't really have anything much else to say, so let's get started. So there's a, a guy in this lab. He's like an older guy, and this lady, she's like this uh, younger, pretty lady with dark hair. And she comes in, and she says, I guess he experiments on animals, like, frogs and shit. I asked you before not to come down to my laboratory while I'm busy with my experiments. Oh. If these animals could speak, they'd have something to say about your taste. She's like, I'm your wife. I want to spend the night with you. So they kiss. It was a really disgusting looking kiss. Uh, like they're rubbing their lips together and then they stop and they kind of rub their lips onto each other's faces. It's just awkward and gross. While they're kissing, the wife stops and she walks towards the door and she's just like, she sees um, the maid. And she's like, I know there was somebody watching. You like to watch, huh? And the maid's like, no, I'm whoever what the fuck I'm gonna call him the hubby he um, has to leave and so I got all his luggage ready and I just wanted to let him know that everything's ready for his journey <clears throat> so they go outside and there's a carriage and it's ready to take the hubby I don't know what he does or what he is I don't know if he's like a, a doctor himself or like I don't know some kind of something but he was gonna take off on some kind of job thing and um, th this guy comes up to him and uh, the, the hubby, he's like, I trust that you will take care of my wife, take care of my plants and everything while I'm gone. And the, he calls the guy David. And he's like, okay, uh, yeah, I got everything under control. Everything's fine. And so he, you know, goes on his way. While they're inside, the wife comes down and she's dressed in this black gown and she goes over to the piano. <clears throat> and she starts playing the piano. But she can hear a man's footsteps coming up the stairs. And, um, and she goes over... I don't know if she goes over to her bedroom or I don't know what. And then she starts taking off her clothes. And I was like, oh my God, is it going to be one of those movies? <laughs> what I get myself into? <laughs> she takes off her clothes, but it we don't see anything more because she like immediately puts on like this frumpy old nightgown. And David comes in. And he's like, I thought that guy would never leave. <laughs> oh, poor Stephen. You know I don't like you to talk about him that way. Why? Do you still love him? 
You're just making a fool of me. <laughs> it's you I love. <laughs> So they start making out the same kind of gross, like just rubbing their lips on each other's faces. And she's like, I'm going to take every vulgar part of you and I'm going to turn it into uh, something subtle and refined. And he's like, well, what is, what does that mean? And she's like, don't worry about it. So the maid, the maid sees them um, leaving like together to go off and I don't know. And uh, so they go off together and do their, their thing and the maid, the maid sees them. And at this point, the maid, her face is like all oh, kind of fucked up. You could tell there's a bunch of makeup on it. And so I knew at a certain point the makeup's going to come off and she's going to like, I don't know, turn beautiful or turn to somebody else or I knew something was something was going to go on like that. <clears throat> so they go to there's like a greenhouse and it's a huge greenhouse and there's plants and shit everywhere and so they go in there and they start doing their thing they're like laying on the ground you know on top of each other going like going at it making out and then the hubby comes and he's has like a Later I found out it was like a dagger, it's like a long dagger. And he just goes and he cuts that guy's face and the guy's like, ah. And then, then he starts hitting the lady and she's just like, ah. And then the next thing you know, they're at a stone wall and they are hung up, like chained to the wall. And the hubby guy is just like slapping them with a whip. And, and the lady, she's just like, I'm gonna come back from the dead and I'm gonna haunt you and the hubby guy's like there's no such thing as ghosts you're not gonna haunt me <laughs> she's just like yes I will my hate is so bad that it's gonna come back from the grave and it's gonna get you it's like yeah sure bitch and then she's like he's like I'm gonna torture you until you're dead she starts saying you know the reason we're rich is because of me and I just recently revised my my will so now, my will, nothing's going to you if I die. It's going to my... Okay, this is super dumb. Okay, it's going to her stepsister. And I don't know why they couldn't just said her, like, real sister or her half-sister even. It, it They said it was her stepsister. And this part's super dumb because, okay, you'll, you'll see later. And she's like... All, everything is going to my stepsister, Jenny. The hubby's like, okay, mm, what am I going to do about it? <laughs> what am I going to do with it? Um, after the hubby was done torturing his uh, wife and David. Oh, my God. I'm cutting that out. After he was done cutting... <laughs> Torturing his wife and David, he brings them to a, a bedroom. And in that bedroom, he um, has the wife tied up on the bed. And the guy is, like, tied up on a chair. And he goes over to the wife. The hubby does. He goes over to Muriel. And he starts, like, kissing on her and stuff. And she's all tied up on the bed. And she can't do anything. And she's like, oh, get out. And he's just kissing on her and touching her in front of um, David. And David's like, no, I don't like this. Stop. Da -da -da -da. Like, he is going crazy. Like, he does not like this at all. And so, um, the hubby releases the guy from his straps. And the guy goes over to Muriel. And as he's going over to Muriel... The hubby walks over to um, this, this lever <laughs> and he pulls on this lever and he electrocutes them. Like there are like fire and sparks coming out of the bed. Both of them are electrocuted dead. 
And so uh, the next scene is Muriel is on a bed, like a, in the lab. She's on a bed in the lab, and there's like on all the shit on her, and then like, of course, like I, think, I feel like back in the day when they thought of mad scientist lab stuff, it's always the same. It's always like you will see some kind of drips being dropped into a thing. I don't know if it means like blood or some shit and then there's always like a floating organ like a floating organ in an aquarium like a goldfish aquarium but I know this guy was doing experiment experiments in his lab and he was trying to create something he never it never says the stepsister um coming in a carriage and she comes in and um, she looks exactly like the other chick, Muriel, but with blonde hair. So there was Muriel, the wife, and then her stepsister. And they somehow look exactly alike, except for different color hair. So this bitch has blonde hair, Muriel had black hair. That's why I was like, why couldn't they have just fucking made them sisters, like actual sisters? I mean, that's what it's like with me and my sister. We're full-blooded sisters. We're 14 months apart. We look exactly alike except for her hair and eye color. She's got black hair and black eyes. <laughs> and she's four inches taller than me. Somehow, so the maid got young. So she, that was so confusing because she looks exactly like Muriel because she had black hair and just kind of like this regular looking chick and this girl had black hair and she's just a regular looking chick and I was like wait is that Muriel did she come back to life but but no because uh the the hubby was like um Jenny this is I have no fucking clue what her name is whatever the fuck and um she's gonna be taking care of you she'll get everything you need <clears throat> the black hair bitch goes Mm. What what is this or whatever? And he's like, "Oh, me and Jenny, uh, we're married. We got married this morning." And she's like, ah! "Like she she's not happy." And they go in and they go into the the castle and um they come across a portrait of Muriel, and they're like, "Wow, you look a lot like." Muriel and this Jenny girl she's like yeah if it wasn't for our hair color we'd be identical she looks at this like coffee table or whatever like that was right in front like right after they walk into the, the castle and um she mentions this plant they keep They'll mention this plant again. It's fucking stupid. <clears throat> One of the things <laughs> that... Okay, so... J Jenny, when she comes in um, from the carriage, she comes out, and then the maid is just like, kind of like, who's this? Da, da, da. And the hubby's like, this is Mrs. Aerosmith number two. So... <laughs> Muriel was Mrs. Aerosmith number one, and Jenny is Mrs. Aerosmith number two. The maid is not happy. She's like, she's like, why do I have to put up with another mistress? So it feels like this shit's been going on for a while. Um... It's like, well, why do they got to keep this bullshit going if he loves the maid? Why don't you just fucking marry that bitch and call it a day? I don't know. After he brings Jenny home, um, she gets, like, into her little nighty and, um, Steven? I don't know. The old guy. Is that Steven? I can't even get these fucking names straight. I, I really can't. Because I thought the one guy was Steven. But then the old guy 
calls that one guy David, but then the other bitch calls him Steven, and so I am just, you know what, I just stopped caring for a while. I'm going to call the old guy Hubby, the young guy, I don't even know, Stavid. The maid lady is supposed to take care of Jenny. I think the, the way that the maid was able to get young again is because he injected the maid with Muriel's blood or some shit. And they're fucking too. Yeah. So they're just like talking and they sort of are making out. I'm like, I'm not even surprised <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Anything fucking goes in this movie. It's just fucking bizarre. After he's done pleasuring Jenny, they go to sleep and they're, they're asleep in the same bed. So it's Jenny and the hubby, the old guy. And they're asleep in the same bed. And that painting that she had seen of Muriel starts talking to Jenny. Ew. Anyway. <clears throat> and she's like, the world kind of starts spinning. And it's just like, woo, 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 woo. And all of a sudden, Jenny is walking towards the greenhouse. Why am I so burpy? Is it the wine? I did eat some cabbage earlier. I eat cabbage the way people eat chips. I don't know. I, I think it's delicious. I just sprinkle some soy sauce on it and I'm just like, nah. Jenny. Jenny finds herself wandering into the um, greenhouse. And she is being followed by this guy. And it is David. And um, David goes up to her and starts like kissing her and stuff. And they end up like on the ground making out. The hubby shows up and he's got a stick. And he like... Slaps the stick onto David, and David just like, and then he hits it onto uh, Jenny, and um, um, so he <laughs> he's standing there, and Jenny goes up to him and looks at his face, and he's standing there with pantyhose on his face, <laughs> like he's gonna rob a bank or something no <laughs> she goes up to him and she wakes up she wakes up in his bed and it's like none of that even happened like she was just having a very bad dream she's like where was i and what terrible place was i at and who was that man so she had no idea who the david guy was that she saw she had no idea where she was. There's a scene where the hubby and the maid are in like a room. And the hubby's like, why is there a vial? This vial's missing, but there's this vial. And he's like, you didn't give her the right vial. Because they, they've, been, they've been pouring it into her like champagne or something. And the maid's like, I don't and he's like, no, you did it. You've been giving her the wrong shit. And then he's like, spirits are not alive. And the, I guess there was a scene when the lady, the Jenny lady was talking about the plant that was dripping blood. I don't know. I don't remember that part, but it's a black and white movie, so you can't fucking tell when something's dripping for whatever. The next scene is Jenny is drinking from this flute, you know, it's like, it looks like a champagne flute or whatever. No, it's like a glass, I don't know, could be goblet, could be wine, whatever. And she puts it down on the, the piano keys, because I guess she was previously playing the piano. She gets up, 
<clears throat> and she fucks off and nobody knows where she goes and uh the maid and the hubby are like where did she go and the maid's like i don't know maybe she went to a room maybe she was tired so i'll go up there and, and check on her and see if she's okay and there's nobody there i'll do it like uh okay where did she go and they're like, well, we will split up and we'll look for her. And all of a sudden they hear a scream. <laughs> like this horrible scream. Jenny! Did you hear that? It came from down below. And they, they, they're like, okay. They're like, oh, let's go look for her. They're running all over the fucking place looking for her. And for some reason they decide, oh, sounds like she's coming from the vault downstairs. Okay. And so they run down there and um, they, op they open the door and she's just like, like just frozen. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, is she dead? Is she done for? What, what? No, no. They put her back in her bed. She's fine. Anyway, she's like, oh, I don't remember. I don't remember this and that. I just remember my hands were covered with blood. And I was, someone locked the door from the outside and I couldn't get out. And um, the, the hubby was like, no, the door was never locked. When we came and rescued you, we just opened the door and it wasn't locked and you just came right out. And, and he's just like, I think you just didn't open it because you didn't want to. So he's like gaslighting this bitch. She's just like, Ugh. okay, are you gonna bring me back to the, the the hospital? And he's like, no, no, we're gonna bring a doctor here, and he's gonna help you. And I didn't know this until later, but apparently she knew this doctor for a while. They got to history. So the next day, the doctor comes in. He's in a carriage. And um, he comes out. And this doctor's fine AF. McDreamy. Yeah. Dr. Mc, McDreamy. Asking her what happened to her and if she's okay and all that. And um, she tells him that the castle to her, it feels like a, a wonderful prison. Because it's a beautiful place, but she's basically kept captive there. He kept asking her in her own words like what happened and she said she never felt like she was in control of the, this stuff and he's like i have a feeling this happened to you like this is not all like you you know like, like there has to be something that is um making this happen to you he said he knows about David. He's asking her about the guy named the guy named David. And he's like, "I want to help I want to help you as much as I can." And the <laughs> hubby, the hubby walks in and he's like telling the doctor that he wants to bring him down to his lab and show him his experiments. And that makes uh Jenny just bust out laughing. <laughs> If you'd like to come down to my laboratory, I shall be pleased to show you some experiments I've made on the electrolytic treatment of the blood. <laughs> Why are you laughing, dear? You and your experiments. <laughs> Jenny, do you hear me? What's the matter with you? He's like, what? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> She's like, I don't know, I'm just confused. <laughs> <clears throat> Somehow the doctor got um, Jenny to go back into um, the green room. She remembers somehow the David guy 
being hit in the face. And that's how it went down when Muriel and that the whole Muriel thing happened. And um, she's like, I don't know, the way she was talking, it was almost like she was kind of in a trance or something. And she's like, and my earring fell off. And so they're like searching down there. Um, her and Dr. McLovin are sort of looking for shit. And they find it. Yep. Dr. McSteamy finds it, and he's just like, is this it? And she's just like, yeah. <sighs> but she says the earring doesn't belong to her. That's so stupid. Anyway, she's like, yeah, I remember the earring doesn't belong to her. And then um, the maid comes, and she's like, um, they're requesting your jewelry box. So she's like, okay. Here it is. And they start looking through it and she's like, oh, this is my, what you would call it that I got at this place. This is my other something, something that I got at this place. Look at this stuff. And this is the earring that I, and she's like, oh, because the bugged hubby has the other earring. So Dr. McFuckby, he's like, her memory is blocked right now. And the maid, the maid is sitting at the table. And she just like, ah, and she just starts bleeding. And Hubby runs over to her and he's just like, everything's okay. Everything's fine. Hubby takes the maid over and he's like, she, it's okay. She's got, she's, uh, she's got a disease. She's, she, she, she she's got a disease thing and uh, I'll fix her. And he, um, you know, injects blood or whatever the fuck into her and it makes her better because something, 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 sciencey something. So Dr. McMary Me is down there, creeping around, looking at shit, trying to figure out stuff. So he walks in and he sees a crypt Annabelle for Annabel Hampton. Died she died in her 27th seven. year. So I guess that was one of um, the wives. And then he looks around and he finds, looking so fucking hot in the process. Oh, Muriel Hampton. She died at 26 years old. And then the crypt opens and there's nothing in it. Oh my god. Your pulse is regular. She must have been completely out of control. You tend to your wound, and I'll look after her. Stephen, I saw her as she was about to strike you. That face, it wasn't hers. It was Muriel's. Uh, Jenny comes out of nowhere, and she fucking cuts hubby. Just, just got some chop. She's got this little thing, and she's like, yeah. Uh, make fuck me comes takes her away, and he's like, you know, that's bad, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> you don't go shanking people. <laughs> and the maid, the maid said, like, that was Muriel. I saw it in her eyes, that wasn't Jenny. Uh, Jenny and uh, McYummy start making out. Um, that, that's totally fine. It's okay. I'll live. She's like, did you see it too, Derek? Apparently his name is Derek. I didn't know that. Mm. And, and until right now, th th thanks for keeping us in the know. Apparently, my lover's name is Derek. I think it would be better for you if you were to leave the castle. Just for a short while. 
some place that's calm and quiet. Very well. Just as you say. And the maid and um, hubby are talking. And the hubby's freaking out because he knows that um, Dr. McCreamy, the hubby is just kind of freaking out because he knows that when they opened up the tomb, there was no body. And there was no body because um, hubby was using it as um, fuel or whatever to make the, the, the maid lady young or something. He's got enough shit on us to put us in jail or to hang us. So McCarty said he's going to take Jenny with him tomorrow. He's going to take her with him because she cannot be here. And hubby ain't having that. <laughs> He's like, okay, there's a scene of him, like, fucking home alone -ing that house. He's putting wires everywhere. <laughs> mm, the payoff is so fucking weird. So this random-ass guy that I've never seen before in the whole movie comes. He's like, it's like this innocent little butler or something. And I think that, um, I think maybe hubby guy was trying to kill somebody. But I know, you know, the ghost David, did I tell you guys that? The ghost David and the ghost Muriel, like, walking around, just hanging out, just, whatever. Ugh. Or he was trying to kill the doctor. Maybe he was trying to kill the doctor. I don't know. I don't know, lost as fuck. Um, <clears throat> he walks over to <laughs> the old guy, the old, like, butler guy, goes over to the bathtub and he puts his hand in it. And then the guy pulls a lever and, and the guy just dies. And then after the guy dies, hubby brings him over to make love me. And he's like, what do we do? do with this guy I mean like he was perfectly healthy there was nothing wrong with him and he could have died of a heart attack and stuff I mean, and the room the room was very hot so that probably had a lot to do with it <laughs> the hubby guy was like can you um write out a death certificate for him and um make make it something else <laughs> if you don't mind, um, you help me move his body too. But Jenny is like, I don't want to stay. She tells the hubby that she's going to leave with Derek. She's on first name basis with my man. The hubby kind of has a problem with that. He's like, I know Derek's been flirting with you. And I know about his sensual kisses and touches and lovings and all that jazz. And he's like, and the greenhouse. I have eyes. He's like, I don't want you to leave with him. He's like, why don't you leave with me and you and I can go somewhere. We can go to Spain. We can go to England. We can go to France, wherever. As long as you go with me. And she's like, okay. Mick Delicious tells her, I have fond feelings for you. Oh, no, no. I have always been fond of you. And then she goes to sleep, and then she has nightmares, and she's talking about daggers. Then she's bitching about other things, and um, she keeps screaming for Steven in her nightmare. And the next day, I guess, she, I don't know, she was just having a dream. The next day, Dr. McGorgeous is leaving, and he's just like, you know, good luck with everything. Um... 
hope everything works out. Peace. And I don't know how these people like took off so fast. I mean, it all seems like they're all like, well, okay, everything's great here. We're going to leave. They had horse and carriage. I don't know. I feel like that would take forever. I mean, you got these horses, and you got to feed them, and you got to, like, hitch them to the shit. There's got to be a guy with all this food and shit with them. It's like calling a fucking Uber. The hubby tells the maid that all three of them are going to be leaving. So it's going to be him, the maid, and um, Jenny. He slaps the shit out of Jenny and he brings her to his lab and puts her in the bed. And the maid is like, stop, I can't stand it. Like she's just freaking out. Chloroforms his Jenny and she passes out. McCreamy comes in. He never left. of Muriel and David and she's like you taught me the pleasure of torment of the flesh which turns into ecstasy I never I don't know what that means I don't know it sounds a little bit BDSM -y to me uh. and she says now I'm going to reward you with the same pleasure David walks to the maid and he slits her wrist and she starts to bleed. Muriel walks over to her hubby <laughs> and her, her, her head, her hair is kind of like, like so, I don't know, I don't, my hairline doesn't really go to the side, but if it did, I guess, I guess it would kind of be <laughs> a little bit like this, but she's walking towards him like, like like so and the she she's got one eyeball walking and uh the other eyeballs hiding and um she goes like this and her eyes her half of her face is all fucked up so it's all like corpsey and shit <laughs> Ugh. uh hubby is just like she sets the hubby guy on fire. Ah, she's like, it's my moment now. And she just goes, you know. The maid lady starts to get old again. Remember how she was like old in the beginning of the movie and she got pretty again and then now she's old again. And she turned into a skeleton. Muriel and David just laugh. They, like, they laugh really super hard. Doctor make love in and them leave the building they didn't leave the castle yet though Muriel and David kind of appear and they're on either side of them and they're going closer and closer to them and they're laughing Dr. McCarty throws something in the fire oh, I, I didn't understand what he did he just does something and it like burns somehow and Somehow the ghosts disappear. Both of the ghosts just, poof, they just vanish. And Jenny and uh, my husband leave. They leave out of the house and they flee. The doctor's like, okay, we don't have to worry about this anymore. And I'm thinking, don't count your chickens just yet. Usually in these movies, if they say something like that, something crazy is gonna happen, but, but no. The only thing that happens is the fucking the end pops up. Actually, I, I kind of enjoyed this movie. It was entertaining and um, the doctor was hot. And, and honestly, the two people that had nothing to do with any of this got away scot-free and they lived. Um, so that was good. That was good. That was a very happy ending. Well, I will give this thing, um, 7.5. 7.5 out of 10.
that might be the highest score I've given anything. <laughs> that was uh, Nightmare Castle from 1965. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope you guys had a great holiday season. And here's to 2021. Bye. Change without